The simplified diagram below represents an electrochemical cell used for the purification of copper. Okay, so this is definitely from uh, electro refining. Okay, so if you haven't, if you don't know about electro refining, go watch my videos on electro refining, and it says here. Yeah, which one of the following graph represents the change in mass? Okay, so we need to quickly do a, a little crash course on electro refining. So the way it works is you have a container and you've got something that is usually, uh, wait, let me just quickly think about the best way to draw it so it matches up nicely with this one. Ah, okay. So we've got something that is over here, which is called, uh, oh, why am I drawing like this? Okay, and this is called the impure impure and then over here you've got the pure this is the pure stuff and what happens is that in the impure stuff you've got all these different chemicals or elements like copper and uh, maybe you've got some zinc and all of that stuff and what happens is that let's say we try uh, let's say we're trying to purify copper just like we are in this question okay so what happens is that this is a pure piece of copper well, let's just say Cu, because that's copper, Cu. And so what happens is that the if you've watched my videos, you'll know that we try to get this copper over here over into the solution as an iron, and then it makes its way over, and then it builds up on this side over here. So we know that, uh, let me just explain a little bit more quickly. We know that this pure copper has to be converted so that if it can move across the liquid, it has to be converted into a copper ion, which is usually a Cu2+. Now that Cu2+, has to be able to get to the other side. The only way that it can get to the other side is if this copper is negative. This copper must be negative so that it can attract the copper 2 plus ion, okay? And then this one would always be positive. So look at the positive over here. So that means this is the impure. And then this is the negative one. So this is the pure. So what happens is that this part here is going to become smaller over time. And this part here is going to become larger or heavier. Okay. So what we would experience or expect is that P should become heavier. And then Q should become lighter. Okay, so P, let's just see here, which of the following graphs represents the change? So P should become heavier and Q should become lighter. But now the problem is, is that we've got, um, okay, let's just see here. Okay, so it can't be this one because Q is getting heavier there and it can't be this one because Q is getting heavier. So it's going to be one of these. Now, oh, I see. It took me a while to think what the difference was. But look at where P starts over there. And look at where P starts over there. So if you understand electro refining quite well, uh, what you'd remember is this part over here, what do we start with normally? Do we start off with absolutely nothing? Or do we start off with a piece of pure copper? Well, well done if you remember, we start off with a piece of pure copper. So we have mass of P in the beginning. So it must definitely be this one. Because if we started here, it starts off way at the bottom at zero. So we're going to start over here. So the answer would have to be A.